In this video, I am going to discuss about Freud's psychosexual theory of development. Sigmund Freud was an Austrian neurologist and the founder of psychoanalysis, a groundbreaking method for treating psychopathology through dialogue between a patient and a psychoanalyst. He is famous for his theories on the unconscious mind, the mechanisms of repression and the structure of personality that is id, ego and superego. Freud introduced influential concepts such as the Oedipus complex, defense mechanisms and the psychosexual stages of development. His work revolutionized the understanding of human psychology significantly impacting both clinical practice and cultural views on mental health, human behavior and sexuality. The essays on the theory of sexuality is considered one of the Freud's most important works. In these essays, he outlines his theory of psychosexual development and introduces other concepts including the Oedipus complex, penis envy and castration anxiety. The five psychosexual stages are oral stage that is from birth to one year, anal stage that is one to years, phallic stage that is 3 to 6 years, latency stage that is 6 years to puberty and genital stage that is puberty to adult. Now oral stage, here the focus is on mouth that is sucking, biting and chewing. During the oral stage, the infant's primary source of interaction occurs through the mouth. So the rooting and sucking reflex is specially important. The mouth is the infant's primary egogenous zone and feeding provides both sustenance and pleasure. A baby who is teething might bite objects including toys or even fingers. If fixation occurs at this stage, for example due to weaning too early or too late, it might result in an oral fixation in adulthood, leading to behavior such as smoking, nail biting or overeating. In anal stage, the focus is on bowel and bladder control. During the anal stage, the focus shifts to controlling bladder and bowel movements. The major conflict at this stage is toilet training, which is an important event as the child learns to control bodily needs. A child who is potty trained too early or too harshly might develop an anal retentive personality, characterized by obsessive cleanliness and orderliness. Conversely, if toilet training is too lenient, the child might develop an anal explosive personality which could result in messiness and disorganization in adulthood. In phallic stage, the focus is on genitals. In the phallic stage, the primary focus is on the genitals. Children begin to identify with their same sex parent and explore difference between males and females. Freud proposed the Oedipus complex for boys and the Electra complex for girls during this stage. A boy experiencing the Oedipus complex might feel a desire for his mother and see his father as a rival. Successful resolution of this conflict leads to identification with the same sex parent, contributing to the gender identity and moral development. Fixation at this stage could result in problems with authority and sexual dysfunction in adulthood. In latency stage, the focus is on dormant sexual feelings. During the latency stage, sexual interests are repressed while the child develops social and intellectual skills. Here, relationship, hobbies and other interests become the primary focus. A child in the latency stage might focus intensely on schoolwork, friendship and sports with minimal interest in sexual matters. This period is critical for the development of communication skills, self-confidence and social interaction. In genital stage, the focus is on maturing sexual interest. The genital stage is marked by the resurgence of the sexual interest and the onset of puberty. The individual develops a strong sexual interest in the opposite sex. The focus is on establishing balanced and appropriate relationships with others. An adolescent navigating the genital stage might begin to form romantic relationship and seek a partner. 
Successful navigation of the stage leads to well-balanced, healthy relationship and a sense of responsibility. Fixations from earlier stages might emerge influencing adult behavior and relationship. Now, significance of Freud's theory. Freud's theory emphasizes the impact of early childhood experiences on adult personality and behavior. Each stage plays a crucial role in the psychological development of an individual. An unresolved conflict at any stage could lead to specific patterns of behavior and psychological issues in adulthood. Freud's stages of development are central to his psychoanalytic theory, highlighting the role of early childhood experiences. The stages illustrate how unresolved conflicts can shape adult personality traits and behavior. This theory provides a framework for understanding the origins of certain psychological disorders. This theory influenced other developmental theories such as Erickson's psychosocial stages. This theory is used in therapeutical setting to explore clients' early experiences and address fixation. Freud's theory profoundly affected how society views childhood development and sexuality. In addition to his conceptions of psychosexual development, Freud believed that there were numerous other driving forces at play that were important to understanding the development of a person's personality. His structural model of personality attempts to describe how the mind works by making distinctions between three parts of personality and the human mind, that is the id, the ego and the superego. Every person is born with an id. The id is responsible for getting the newborn child's basic needs met. Freud claimed that the id is based on something known as a pleasure principle which essentially means the id wants whatever feels good at that precise moment and disregards any ramifications. There is no consideration for how the rest of the situation might play out and for any other people involved. For example, when a baby is hurt, wants something to eat, needs to be changed or simply wants the attention of others, the id drives the baby to cry until its needs are met. The next aspect of the personality, the ego, begins developing naturally over the first three years as a result of the child's interacting with the world around him. Because of this, Freud claimed that the ego is based on something he referred to as a reality principle. The ego comes to realize that there are other people around that also have desires and needs and that impulsive selfish behavior can actually lead to harm. The ego has to consider the reality of any particular circumstances while also meeting the needs of the id. For example, when a child thinks twice about doing something inappropriate because he understands the negative outcome that will occur, this is the ego asserting itself. Now, superego. The superego develops when a child is 5 years old and is nearing the end of the phallic stage. This is the part of our personality that is made up of morals and ideals that have been acquired and placed on us by society and our parents. Many people also find the superego to be equivalent to the conscience, since both terms have come to refer to the part of our personality that judges what is right from what is wrong. Freud believed that in a truly healthy person the ego would be stronger than the id and superego so that it could be considered the reality of the situation while both meeting the needs of the id and making sure the superego was not disturbed. In the case of the superego being strongest, a person will be guided by very strict morals and if the id is strongest, a person will seek pleasure over morality and could end up causing great harm. Such as rape, for example, is when one chooses pleasure seeking over morality and is a sign of a strong id. Freud believed that our feelings, beliefs, impulses and underlying emotions were buried in our unconscious and therefore not available to the waking mind. However, Freud also believed that there were levels of consciousness beyond just conscious or unconscious. To better understand Freud's theory, imagine an iceberg. The water surrounding the iceberg is known as the non-conscious. This is everything that has not become part of our conscious. 
these are the things we have not experienced and are not aware of and therefore they do not become part of or shape our personalities in any way the tip of the iceberg our conscious is only a very small portion of our personality and since it's the only part of ourselves that we are familiar with we actually know very little of what makes up our personality the conscious contains thoughts perceptions and everyday cognition directly below the conscious at the base of the iceberg is the preconscious or subconscious if prompted the preconscious mind can be assessed but it is not actively part of our conscious and requires a little digging things such as childhood memories our old telephone number the name of a friend we had when we were younger and any other deeply stored memories are found in this area it is in the preconscious mind that the super ego can be found since we are only aware of the tip of the iceberg at any given time the unconscious is incredibly large and consists of those buried inaccessible layers of our personality it is here that we find things like fears immoral urges shameful experiences selfish needs irrational wishes and unacceptable sexual desires this is also where the id can be found the ego is not fixed to one particular part of the iceberg and can be found in the conscious preconscious and unconscious there is no denying just how influential sigmund freud was to the fields of psychology and psychiatry his ideas completely changed the way people viewed personality sexuality memory and therapy and he is perhaps the most well known psychologist in the popular vernacular a century after he first arrived as a notable scholar of the mind now try this